Everybody doing today, baby? Big old Tuesday, September 3rd. We're at the four o'clock hour, and it's that time of the day. Found artists of the day, man. Let me tell y'all something. I got somebody special for y'all today. This guy was one of the best songwriters on the planet. This guy wrote songs for Fats Domino, Clarence Frogman Henry. Bill Haley in the comments, he wrote some songs that uh, Ray Charles covered, Delvin McClinton covered. Man, you name it, he did it. This guy met Elvis Presley. He was good friends with Elvis. <clears throat> this guy is from Abbeville, Louisiana, and his name is Bobby Charles, y'all. I'm going to play this very first song by him, and then we'll get to start talking about my buddy Bobby Charles. There you go. Why can't you? Why can't you say that you still love me? Why can't you be like you used to be? You used to be just mine To have and to hold But now you've changed Your love has grown cold You know I love you I tell the world I do I love you Say that you love me too Why can't you Be like you used to be Why can't you Say that you still love me By the late great Bobby Charles, y'all, from Abbeville, Louisiana. Man, what an incredible song. That guy, uh, he's written some hits. We recorded that song on our, listen to this, Lost in the 50s CD, which people don't even know we have. We recorded that CD in 2001. Bobby Charles, y'all, from Abbeville, Louisiana, was born in February 1938, and he passed away January 2010. Of a heart attack. He was 71 years old. Now, before we move on, I want to let you guys know this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Girlie and Associates, over there in Mississippi, your trusted Medicare advisors. Thank you guys, Girlie and Associates, for your support. All right, let's get back to Bobby Charles. Let me tell y'all, Bobby Charles written some songs that were big hits on the charts, R&B charts, pop charts. Um, 
I'm going to tell you a quick story about him and Thad's Dime. <laughs> At the age of 15, he heard Fats Domino. He went to a performance, Fats Domino, and he said that event changed his life forever. He met Fats. He wrote some songs for Fats. It keeps raining. He wrote. Um, he pr he co-wrote. Um, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, before I grow too old, I'm sorry. Him and Fats wrote that wrote that song, and Fats wanted him to write some more stuff for him. So they became friends. Fats came down, and he invited him to a show in New Orleans. <laughs> Listen up. And Bobby said, man, I would love to go, but I have nowhere to get there. I don't have a car. Fats said, well, you better start walking. Well, that's all it took. Bobby Charles wrote Fats Domino's hit, Walk It to New Orleans, after that day. And Fats told him, you better start walking. That was the thing about Bobby Charles. When I, I never knew Bobby personally because he died before I really knew who he was. Never got to meet him. But he was the type of guy that wrote songs. He didn't sit down and plan to write a song. If something came to his mind, he grabbed the pencil and paper and he started writing. And everybody I talked to him, everybody I talked to about him said he can write a song in 15, 20 minutes. So... He wrote a bunch of hits, and I'm going to go through them all. Not all, but I'm going to go through quite a few of them. But this is one that he wrote. It's an older song. We play it live. Frogman Harry did a version of it. Johnny Allen did a version of it. Quite a few people did a version of it. But this is Bobby Charles' version, and I know you guys know this song. It's called Your Picture. He recorded this on the Chess Record label back in the, uh, 55, 56 here it is, your picture by late great Bobby Charles. I look up and see your picture. I cry and it just smiles at me. It brings back a lot of memories of a love that used to be. Sometimes I wonder when I hold it If you can hear me call your name Then I start crying like a baby I guess I'll never be the same song i love that song so much my buddy johnny allen did a version of that song years ago too and i love his version just as good uh <clears throat> he has that predominant solo saxophone solo harry Seminole did man it's, it's incredible but uh so let's get back to uh bobby charles y'all bobby charles started writing music at the age of 15 he um uh, he wrote a song which everybody, I mean, a bunch of people know the song. They know the name of it. They heard it before. See you later, alligator. Okay. Story about that is he was out somewhere with some friends, and they was doing whatever. I mean, he was 15 at the time, so they wasn't doing too much. But 
he was ready to leave, and he told somebody, see you later, alligator. And somebody said, after a while, crocodile, same story. He said, what did you say? He said, after a while, crocodile. Went home, got a pen and paper, wrote, see you later, alligator, which was a number six hit on the charts in 1956 by Bill Hale in the comments. But before that, he he sent the version of this song to Fats Domino. <laughs> and he sang it to him or he listened to it, I'm not sure. But I do know this, Fats Domino didn't want to take the song. And Bobby asked him, why not, man? He said, I don't want to be singing about no alligators. <laughs> so he got hooked up with a guy out of Chicago named Leonard Chess with Chess Records. And Chess heard the song. Actually, Bobby Charles sang it to him over the uh, phone. The kid's only 15 years old, man. He wrote this song. And Chess loved it. Went on, signed a contract, did all this without even meeting Bobby Charles. So Bobby Charles gets up there and goes and goes start recording the songs and stuff like that. And uh, it was a little mishap. <laughs> Back in them days... Chess Records was a pretty much all black, all black artists. Well, when Bobby Charles got up there, they seen that he wasn't a black artist. So they had a little bit of an issue. They thought by hearing him on the phone and all that that he was a black artist. Well, anyway, that's all history. That's all back in the day. So he recorded See You Later, Alligator on the Chess label, 1955. And on the flip side was of that, was on bending knee. It went up on the chart, see you later, alligator, but it did not become as big of a hit as when it did with Bill Haley and the Comets the following year in 1956. Uh, I was on the phone yesterday with my good buddy John Smith, saxophone player, and we was talking about Bobby Charles. I was going, I told him I was doing this podcast, so I called him, and I know he worked with Bobby Charles. And he did some recording with him, and he was friends with Bobby Charles. He told me the first time he met Bobby Charles, John was 13 years old. And he was doing a gig. He was playing in a town called Morris, Louisiana, not Maurice. He made sure to let me know it wasn't Maurice. Morris, Louisiana, old rundown wooden building. And he was playing. And then Bobby Charles walked in. That's how he met Bobby Charles. And the rest is history. He was good friends with Bobby Charles. And uh, he told me that when he was with chess that he got they they took advantage of him as I should say with the royalties and stuff like that they burnt him so and then he also did say you know the the hits that this guy wrote is incredible uh Bill Haley in the comments took his song and like I said he got uh see you later alligator got the number six on the charts and really and truly there was a fast domino at the time but John said he remembered that song and on the flip side of that Bill Haley's version of See You Later Alligator was Rock Around the Clock. He said he remembered them two songs coming out, and he said that was the birth of rock and roll back in the 50s, between Fast Domino and then you had Dat. Fast Domino led to more of a swamp pop style. This led to more like a rockabilly, rock and roll, Bill Haley in the comments. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Pretty cool information, man. But look, let me get back to uh, Fast Domino, Walking to New Orleans. I'm going to play Walking to New Orleans, but I'm going to play a version. It's not Fast Domino's version. Bobby Charles recorded this on his CD, Last Train to Memphis. And there's a little part on there with at the very end where Fast Domino is singing with him. But what's special about this song to me, I just told y'all about John Smith. And I told y'all know how I feel about John Smith. He plays saxophone for me two times in the band, two different times, for about 10 months and then about eight months. But John is actually playing on this CD, and he did the solo to this song. So I want to play this. Walking to New Orleans, that was written by the late, great Bobby Charles for Fats Domino. It was a top 10 hit on the charts, and it goes like this. to New Orleans 
listen right here, John Smith. Listen to this, baby. cool is that man they put fast domino on that cut that was great and how about that saxophone solo man by my buddy john smith baby god he's the baddest dude to ever play a saxophone i'm gonna tell y'all all right <laughs> let's get back man let's get back once again let me let y'all know this episode is uh brought to you by girl and associates your trusted medicare advisors out of mississippi over there man some good friends of ours good sponsor we appreciate you guys thank you so much <clears throat> Let's get back to Bobby Charles, baby. Bobby Charles also wrote some hits for a guy named right out of New Orleans, Clarence Frogman Henry. And uh, when he left, he wound up leaving Chess Records after a couple years. Things didn't, didn't work out. And then he went to Imperial, which was the same label as Fast Domino. Dave Bartholomew was doing all the producing. I think they cut some stuff for Frogman. That's where all this came through. Uh, there's a couple of them that I love that Bobby wrote for Frogman. And um, this particular song is called Jealous Con. It was written by Bobby Charles, and Frogman recorded in 1962. Now, that that one, to me, is my favorite Clarence Frogman Henry song. And Bobby Charles wrote that. Just a jealous kind. And if all you guys know the song, they had quite a few versions came out. Joe Cocker did Bobby Charles' song, um, Jealous Kind. Also, Delvin McClint. Just a jealous kind was a hit for them guys. But in 1962, Frogman Henry was the first guy to ever record that song. But to get over that song, let's move on to the next song. This is the one I'm going to play for y'all. This was one of Frogman Henry's biggest hits. And everybody knows that it. it's written by Bobby Charles. I don't know why I love you, but I do. This was a top 10 hit for the Frogman, and I'm going to play it for y'all right now.
what do you know about that, baby? I don't know why I love you, but I do. By the late, great Bobby Charles. That song was sang by the late, great Clarence Frogman Henry right out here in New Orleans, Louisiana. The song was also featured in the 1994 film Forrest Gump. Everybody watched that movie before. Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump, that, that song was definitely featured in that movie. <clears throat> but, man, what an incredible songwriter this guy was. This guy wrote songs for everybody. He recorded very little, okay? He had a couple LPs, some 45s out there with Chess Imperial. He had the Rice and Gravy Records, his own little records. He, um, Chess Records, Imperial Records, Bearsville, Stony Plain, Proper, he was he was involved in the music scene. He did a lot of writing. Like I said, he was friends with a lot of popular artists. He wrote songs. Guys like Ray Charles covered some songs. Willie Nelson. I mean, you name him, he wrote for him. But his biggest hit, his biggest hit was "See You Later, Alligator," which again, <laughs> I think it's funny how he pitched that to Fats. <laughs> and Fats said, "Man, I'm not singing about no alligators," but. That was his biggest hit. See you again. I'm going to play that for y'all shortly here. It was released on Chess in 1955 by, by Bobby Charles. But in 1956, it was released by Bill Haley in the Comets. See you later, Alligator. But I'm going to play Bobby's version right now. And um, it's a cool song. Everybody liked it back in the day, in the 50s. Matter of fact, we just did a show with Java Gene in uh, June. And he covered it. See you later, alligator. And look, by the way, man, this guy, Bobby Charles, like I said, he was from Abbeville. He was friends, all the Swamp Pop artists, Johnny Allen, Tommy McLean, Warren. Him and Warren were good friends when they was younger. They would go together to see Fats play. Fats came to Abbeville and played. They went and seen him in concert together. They did a bunch of stuff together. Warren recorded a bunch of his stuff, man. And he recorded um, the one that we recorded, I Don't Want to Know. And... Uh, Johnny Adams from New Orleans recorded, I don't want to know. Bunch of guys recorded his song, man. Bunch of his song. So, here it is. See you later, alligator. Bobby Charles, y'all. I saw my baby walking with another man today. Well, I saw my baby walking with another man today. When I asked her what's the matter, this is what I heard her say. See you later, alligator. After one clock it out. See you later, alligator. After one clock it out. Sorry, pretty dad. You know my love is just for you. She said, I'm sorry, pretty daddy. You know my love is just for you. Won't you say that you forgive me? You say that you still love me too. I said, wait a minute, baby. You know you meant it just to play. I said, wait a minute, baby. I know you 
Caught me off guard there, Bobby. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it. See you later, alligator, man. Look, that was his biggest hit. That was his biggest hit. He had a bunch of them. But look, y'all check it out. He still has some music out there. YouTube. Matter of fact, there's a documentary about him they just released in February. Uh, it's not out, but they aired it at the, uh, in New Orleans over there at the Ponson Train Center. And... Uh, I heard some stories about it saying it was a good documentary. I can't wait for it to come out so I can really see what's going on and all the things about this guy. I, I want to know. I want to know a bunch of more history. I only know very little. But he is an incredible songwriter for all the Swamp Pop artists and all over the world, man. He's, he's, he's known all over. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bobby Charles, Abbeville, Louisiana, died in 2010. He was 71 years old. Y'all, check out his music, iTunes, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora. It's all over the place. Uh, thank y'all so much. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all for tuning in. Once again, we want to thank our sponsor, Girl and Associates, for sponsoring this episode. We'll see y'all soon, y'all. Y'all take care. <laughs>